Let me check. Am I audible? Am I audible? My audible. Hello, everyone. Welcome to An Academy Future Doctors. Here in this channel, we are uploading videos for first MBBS university going exams students. That is for crash course. And if you have anybody in your friends or family members or anybody as your junior who is going for first MBBS university exams, you can share all these videos to them. All these videos, they are free. You can access free on our platform on Academy Future Doctors. Let us start. I'm myself, Dr. Deepti Garia. I'm MD, PhD, Physiology, and I'm Associate Professor Educating MBBS Nursing and Physiotherapy Students. I have more than 17 years of teaching experience. Let me explain something about our subscription. In plus subscription, you can choose best from the best. Now, which are the characters uh, features in plus subscription? Here you can access both live as well as recorded classes. You can study on the device of your choice. You can learn from India's top educators for your medical exams. You can access question bank with more than 25,000 questions. You can compete in live test quizzes. And within short period of time, within 12 months, we are coming with our printed notes. Now, next, that is iconic subscription. Here, you access to the best from two of the best. One that is an academy and prep ladder with an academy, and second one that is an academy and prep ladder with prep ladder. Okay. Features of first one that I have already discussed. This one. Okay. Features of the second one that is an academy and prep ladder with prep ladder. They are here. You can access all resources of 2021 Dream Pack, which includes clinical and integrated essentials video lectures from our dream team, question bank three with active guidance, system tags, and more. You can have rapid revision and snapshots, as well as treasures and 2021 dream notes. So you can subscribe from your mobile plus or iconic. And you can also use my code to get 10% discount. That is Dipti 10. So you get 10% discount on each and every subscription. Longer the duration of subscription, cheaper are the rates. So if you're a first or second year student, I suggest to have longer duration subscription. Now, there is also one more announcement. This week, we have a neat PG combat okay, in which you have been given 45 questions. You have to crack those 45 questions in one hour, 60 minutes. Okay? And you get a chance to win scholarship on our plus subscription. First rank gets a chance to win 100% scholarship. Okay? As well as you can win Amazon vouchers up to rupees 20,000. Now, another thing here, you can see, this is uh, you can use my user code and you can enroll it free. 
So please note down the date November 28 at 5 p.m. As I have already told you, discussed with you that rank 1 gets 100% scholarship, rank 2 to 10 gets 75% scholarship, rank 11 to 50 gets 50% scholarship, rank 51 to 200 gets 25% scholarship. As well as top 100 rankers can win Amazon vouchers also. So get ready to compete with India's all learners. Now, let us start with today's topic that is blood groups. Okay. How we are determining blood group? All of you are knowing that we have different blood group. All of you are knowing your blood group may be A, B, A, B, O, positive, negative. Okay. So how can we determine this? Whether your blood group is A or B. So they are determined by presence of antigen. This antigens they are present on the surface of RBC. RBC surface antigens are present. Okay, and this antigens they agglutinate with antibodies. Okay, this blood group systems ABO and RH they were discovered by Landsteiner in 1901. And RH system was discovered by Wiener Science. Okay? And they were honored Nobel Prize in 1930. Now, ABO blood group system. Here you can see in ABO blood group system there is antigen antibody reaction, but this antigens are known as agglutinogen. You can see here you have to write the name agglutinogen. These antigens are known as agglutinogen. Okay. And this antibody is so specific, be specific, write down this name only. This antibodies are known as agglutinin. Okay. Now, this agglutinogens, they are A and B for ABO system. And then agglutinins, they are anti-A and anti -B. Very important thing, Land Stainer's Law. So many students, they make mistake in this law. So always remember law particularly, word by word. Okay. So this Land Stainer's Law has two parts. Okay. Parts. The first part, if we discuss that, if particular agglutinogen is present on RBC membrane, Corresponding agglutinin must be absent in the serum. What it means, I'll explain you. Suppose, if agglutinogen A is present on RBC membrane, corresponding agglutinin NTA must be absent in the serum. This is first part. Second part, if agglutinogen is absent, suppose A is absent, then Agglutinin NTA must be present. Jyotika V. Hello. Now, so this is Land Stainer's Law. So, very important thing. Okay. Students, what are they talking about? What are they Antigen or agglutinogen present. Agglutinin absent. Agglutinin present. Antigen absent, not this is wrong. So, how to explain? Always start with antigen. Okay, so whenever you are explaining the law, always start with antigen. Let us repeat if particular agglutinogen is present on RBC membrane, corresponding agglutinin must be absent in the serum. And if particular agglutinogen is absent, on the RBC membrane, corresponding agglutinin must be present in the serum. So, always start with agglutinogen. Okay? In our body also, when antigen enters, then only antibodies are produced. Now, this part, second part of the law, exception is RH system. We will discuss how. In RH positive individual, D antigen is present or D agglutinogen is present. Means anti-D is absent. Okay. 
Okay, so according to law, first part is followed antigen present, antibody absent. Now, what about the second part? If antigen is absent, antibody must be present, anti-D. But here, anti-D is also absent. This happens in Rh negative individuals. Antigen and antibody both are absent. So, you can say that Lenz Tennis law is not followed. Very, very important. Try to remember this thing. Okay. This will be asked in your theory as well as practical. Now, next is blood grouping system. Depending on type of agglutinogen or antigen, okay, whether antigen is present or absent. There are various blood grouping systems. Okay? Now, more than 20 different blood grouping systems are there, but major blood grouping system which are which we are using normally, regularly, that is ABO and RH. Okay? ABO we say that A RH means positive or negative. And other minor blood grouping systems, they are M, N, P. Bombay blood group. So, this all are the other blood grouping systems. Now, starting with ABO systems. In ABO system, according to this system, there are four blood groups. Okay? We are divided in this four blood groups. Okay? A, B, AB and O. All of you know, your blood group is from any of this four. Okay? So, a blood group B, A, B or O. Now what happens if suppose your blood group is A? You can see here in this diagram. If your blood group is A, means antigen A are present on your RBC. Okay. And antibody A is absent. Okay. So this is first part of the law. Now what about second part of the law? Antigen B is absent on RBC membrane of your blood. So, anti B must be present in your serum. So, this way you can see both the parts of the law are followed. Okay? Suppose, let us revise for blood group B. Suppose your blood group is B. So what happens in your blood? According to the law, first part, Antigen B is present. So, antibody B absent. Okay. Antigen A is absent. So, antibody B, antibody A must be present. Am I clear? This is very important. Now, next, suppose your blood group is AB, this one what happens antigens a and b are present so antibodies a and b are absent okay this way suppose your blood group is o according to this law antigen a and b are absent so antibodies a and B are present. Okay? So, this is the explanation of blood group systems and Lenz Tennis law. Now, inheritance of the ABO, system, ABO blood group. Okay? For this, suppose your blood group is A or B or AB, how can it be decided? For that, we have genes. Genes for A, B, and O. Okay? Genes for A blood group, that is A. So, genotype and phenotype. You all know. Now, so, A and B, these two, they are dominant. And O, that is recessive. So, what happens? You can see here. Suppose your genotype is AA, then your blood group would be A. If your genotype is AO, means one chromosome has A gene, other is not having A. Still, your blood group is A. Then, B. If both the chromosomes having B genes, B. If one of the chromosomes having B gene, then also B. AB, one has A, other has B. 
and blood group O. None of the chromosome having G. This agglutinogen A and B they appear at about sixth week of intrauterine life. Intrauterine or fetal life. When we are we have not yet born intrauterine life. So before birth. Concentration of this agglutinogen at birth is about one fifth than adult level. Okay. Then gradually it increases, and at puberty, this reaches to adult value. Okay. Next is A and B agglutinogen. Now, what is the structure of this A and B agglutinogen? These are complex oligosaccharides. And they are present first on the membrane of RBC. They are already present. Also, they are present not only on the membrane of RBC, but present in the salivary glands. You can write down also. Salivary glands. Pancreas. Liver, kidney, lungs, and testes. So you can say that they are present in the fluids, body fluids, salivary glands secrete saliva. So they are also present in saliva. Sometimes question may be asked as saliva contains agglutinogen. Hmm? Saliva. Testes, if they are in testes, so they are present in semen also, present in the amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid. Sometimes what happens, antigens, some of the antigens, they are similar to A and B, agglutinol. They are present in the intestinal bacteria. As well as they enter in our body through food, which Infants, they are exposed and they develop antibodies. So, antigens are exposed always. Suppose A antigen is exposed, then what happens? Anti B are produced. As according to Lanfitanus law, if A is present, anti A must be absent. So, anti A is absent, anti B are produced. Okay? Now, this antibodies. Antibodies are known as agglutinin. Here you can see different agglutinins are there. So, these agglutinins, they are present in the plasma and they appear at about 10th day after birth. Level rises and reaches to peak level at about 10 years and then it decreases. So this one. Now, blood grouping. This is also uh, you are you are performing this as a practical blood grouping, which is also known as blood typing and blood matching. So here, what we do is we are determining blood group whether your blood group is A, B, AB, or O. So principle is depending on presence of antigen on antigen or agglutinogen on RBC membrane okay now so what is the procedure here what you have to do is so you can see here there there are tiles small pits are there in a tile these pits they can they we have to fill anti serum or serum containing antibodies okay suppose you can see here this pit contains anti a means Serum containing antibody A. Second pit contains anti B, means serum containing antibody against. Third is control. And another one that contains anti D, that is for RH positive or negative. Now, you have to add RBC suspension, not direct RBC, just add normal saline in the blood drop and add in all this pore. This is control to just compare. Okay. Now, 
suppose you can say that here if there is agglutination what happens if here there is agglutination then antigen a is present because it agglutinates with anti a normally anti a is not present in our body if suppose your blood group is a so there is reaction between a and anti a okay so your blood group is a suppose there is agglutination in anti b what happens your your rbcs they contain b antigen if suppose you have agglutination in both then your blood group would be ab if you don't have agglutination in any of them then your blood group would be o if there is agglutination in d means you have d antigen and if d antigen is present means your blood group is positive so suppose agglutination is here in anti a and anti d so your blood group is a r h positive so this way so these are the results you can see agglutination with anti serum a blood group would be a anti serum b blood group would be b in both a and b then blood group would be a b and in none then blood group would be o okay now what is the importance of blood group whenever uh, why do we require to check the blood groups because before blood transfusion this cross matching is required it is must why that is to prevent transfusion reaction this transfusion reactions are very serious they may lead to death of the individuals also we will discuss so to prevent transfusion reactions okay so you can see here what do we match required matching that is antigen antigen of donor or you can say donors rbc and recipients plasma why because donors rbcs are in millions okay they are in millions so we require to match because otherwise what happens they get agglutinated okay now previously it was said that o blood group has no antigen no antigens okay so there is no reaction okay. so you can say that person with o blood group can donate anyone and the person is known as universal donor and ab blood group because they don't have antibodies so they can accept so that is known as universal universal recipient this one now how we do how do we do cross matching for cross matching there are there are two types of cross match number one is another thing as this universal donor and recipient terminologies now they are not used because other blood grouping systems are there that is bombay blood group m and so always do the cross matching now what is this cross matching so cross matching means what we have to do is suppose one person wants to give blood to another so what we have to do is we have to mix this two blood okay donors cell and recipient serum so what happens suppose this is recipient serum we have to mix donor cell in that what happens suppose recipient has antigen and the donors have antibody they they, they both will react and what happens agglutination is found if it is not if it is absent then only blood is given blood transfusion is given okay now this is major cross matching this one what is minor cross matching here what do we have to do is donors serum and recipients are busy and matching between these two okay and if there is no reaction then we can definitely give blood transfusion okay? but at least major cross matching is must if minor may have reaction that is fine but major cross matching is must now how they are inherited inheritance of abo agglutinogen so 
This as we have discussed, these antigens, they appear during sixth week of intrauterine life, fetal life. Okay. Okay. And at birth, they are one fifth than that of adult level. And at puberty, adult level is achieved. Okay. This agglutinogen antigen, they are also present as we have discussed, salivary gland, pancreas, liver, lungs, kidney, etc. And they are inherited, that also I told, by Mendelian phenotype. Mendelian phenotype. We have already discussed A and B are dominant and O is recessive. Okay? So, as I told you, suppose mother's mother blood group is AA, father's is, both are A, but mother's genotype is AA, father is AO, so baby would be A. Okay, so whether it is AO or AA, genotype, phenotype would be A. Okay, genotype BB or BO, phenotype would be B. OO, then O, A and B, then blood group would be AB. Okay, now, Next is antibodies. These antibodies are produced in response to antigen. Antigen enters first and then antibodies are produced. Okay? And they are produced after 2-3 to three months. ABO blood group antibodies, they are IgM type. And RH blood group antibodies are IgG type. So these are, you can see, antibodies. These are antigens. Okay. Now, transfusion reaction. What happens when there is transfusion reaction? Or you can say there is incompatibility. Incompatibility means no match between donor and recipient's uh, blood group. Okay. So you can see here. Suppose this is antigen A and these are anti A. Antigen A is present and anti A are also present. So both they get agglutinated on the RBC membrane. And second step is hemolysis. So this happens. Now, which are the reactions they occur? First, as I told you, hemolysis. Here you can see hemolytic reaction. So hemolysis of RBC. RBCs are destroyed. Second is because of RBC destruction, as all of you know, hemoglobin is released. Hemoglobin converted into heme and globin. Globin is amino acid. It will go to amino acid pool. Heme again has iron, which will go to iron pool and porphyrin, four pyrrole rings. Okay, this porphyrin, it releases bilirubin. And when bilirubin level increases, okay, when bilirubin level increases, then there is jaundice. So that is second thing. When bilirubin is more than 2 milligram per 100 ml per deciliter, then there is jaundice. Okay? Now, next is because of this uh, loss of RBC, there is circulatory shock due to release of hemoglobin, viscosity of blood decreases. So, load on the heart increases and heart fails. That is circulatory shock. And next is renal shutdown. What happens here? Because of toxins which are released, hmm, of antigen antibody reaction, these toxins, they cause vasoconstriction. And mainly when there is vasoconstriction of renal vessels, that results in renal shutdown. Second thing is, so that is first cause. Second cause of renal shutdown that is because hemoglobin is released in blood. Okay? So that is hemoglobinemia and then hemoglobin urea means hemoglobin is excreted in urine and this blocks kidney tubules. So there is renal shutdown. And death because of renal shutdown. That is N urea urine output is absent. So that is death of the Okay, so you can say how serious these reactions are. Now, some sometimes reactions they occur with match blood transfusion also. Suppose if we have given A blood group to the individual having A blood group, 
then some reactions occur like shivering may occur chest discomfort because of circulatory overload iron may be there if continuously or repeatedly blood is transfused electrolytes may also imbalance because of this blood transfusion having variation in the electrolytes various diseases are transmitted like malaria because malarial parasite is there in, uh, in the rbc's hepatitis and hiv okay. now next is rh system here also in rh system also agglutinogen or antigens they are present on the cell membrane of rbc okay. this antigens they are discovered by landsteiner land Inner and Wiener. Both. ABO was discovered by only Landstein. Okay? And uh, this was discovered first on rashes monkey. So the name was given RH. Okay? And in this system, we have six antigens C, D, E, capital, small c. Okay? Here, highest is capital D. This one. So, if D antigen, sorry, D antigen is present, then blood group is Rh positive. Okay. And if D antigen is absent, then blood group is Rh negative. Here it is irrespective whether capital C, capital E, small c, small d, small e, anything is present. But D is absent. This is prerequisite. Okay. Here, what is the difference between RH and ABO system? It will not, RH system will not follow land stainer's law. Okay. Now, what is it as I told you? Let us repeat. According to land stainer's law, if particular antigen is present on RBC membrane, first part of the law. Okay. So according to first part antigen. D is present if the blood group is Rh positive. Then corresponding antibody anti D must be absent. So this is followed. This part is followed. Now, second part of the law is if D sorry D antigen is absent. Okay, what is according to the law that that NTD must be present, but NTD are also absent here. Okay. Yashwant Yashas. Huh? You need not to send all the selfies. Okay. This is live recording along with that. That is also available. And if students are not ready, not interested, that is not my fault, my problem. Okay. You should be ashamed of. You can also leave if you wish. I am not insisting even. So, here, second part of the law is not followed. Yashesh, we also will laugh in the same way in your exams. Okay? We get the chance. Now, so, you can see here, second part is not followed in Rh negative individual. Okay? In Rh negative, D antigen and D antibody both are absent. Okay? Now, what is the percentage of Rh positive and negative individual. Okay. Normally, 85% people, they are Rh positive. 85%. And only 15% they are Rh. Sorry, 85% are Rh positive and 15% they are Rh negative. Okay. This we have discussed exception of the second part of the law. Now, next is Rh antibodies. Here, very, very important word is no naturally occurring antibodies are present. Okay. Means NTD are not naturally present in any of the individual, any of us. When they are produced, 
if d integer is given to rh negative individual then only nt are produced okay ntd are produced these antibodies are igg type and they work best at body temperature so they are known as warm antibodies okay warm antibodies and once produced these antibodies they remain in the blood in the circulation for lifetime and they produce serious reactions we will discuss okay ah. so inheritance of rh antigen you can see here suppose father is rh positive and mother is rh negative here also capital d is dominant gene small d is receptor okay now so what happens if suppose anybody's genotype is capital d capital d or capital d small d then phenotype is rh positive <coughs> and when only genotype is small d small d then the person is rh negative so suppose you can see here what happens when father is positive mother is negative you can see here 50% chances of the child having rh positive if suppose genotype is this dd capital d then 100% chances of baby having rh positive okay now here which type of transfusion reactions they occur in rh system so here what happens when there is first exposure mostly the reactions they occur only in rh negative individual when we give rh positive blood to rh negative individual here negative person So on first exposure, what happens? Individual is not affected much, but in this individual, antibodies are produced, okay? and these antibodies they produce delayed reaction. Delayed reaction means when second time blood is transfused, then reactions they occur on second exposure, okay? and these reactions are severe like ABO. Now, very very important question may be asked here. hemolytic disease of newborn here this results from rh incompatibility means mother is rh in rh incompatibility here what happens mother is rh negative and father is rh positive so baby also is rh positive okay? so what happens here there is erythroblastosis fetalis or icterus gravis neonatorum or carnictrus or hydrox fetalis okay now so all this commonly known as hemolytic disease of newborn so suppose your question is hemolytic disease you have to write down all these features i will discuss okay now you can see here as i told you mother is rh negative father is rh positive then chances of baby having rh positive is 75% okay and negative is 25% okay <clears throat> now why there is hemolytic disease of newborn mechanism mechanism kya hota hai okay. so here what happens suppose this is pregnancy mother is rh negative baby is rh positive so in pregnancy there is no issue no problem first child is also normal but at the time of delivery of baby you can see here baby's blood may enter in mother circulation so mother produces antibodies this antigen enters in the mother and mother produces antibody these are rh anti rh antibody okay <coughs> this is produced within one month after delivery and the mother develops this antibodies they are igg type once formed this antibodies are present in mother for long period of time continuously throughout the life okay now so in second pregnancy and subsequent pregnancy you can see here 
these antibodies are there in mother. Okay. Now, these antibodies in the second pregnancy, these antibodies they enter in baby. And they cause hemolysis of baby's RBC because baby's RBC having D antigen. So this antibody they bind with this antigen and they cause hemolysis. Okay? Therefore, this is known as hemolytic disease because of hemolysis in baby. <coughs> Very important thing sometimes. You may be asked the question that this hemolysis and erythroblastosis may occur in first pregnancy. The answer is yes. When suppose mother is Rh negative and mother is given Rh positive blood. <coughs> so never give Rh negative lady Rh positive blood. Otherwise what happens first child may be having this incompatibility okay now abo incompatibility does there any chance of having abo incompatibility hmm? mother's blood group is different baby's blood group is different hmm? suppose mother's blood group is you can see here mother's blood group is o baby's blood group is a okay because father's blood group would be a so what happens mother is having anti a anti b so, they are already present in mother. So, they may enter in baby and agglutinate. Does it happen? No. Why? Because these are IgM type of antibody. ABO. They cannot cross the placenta. Whereas, RH antibodies are IgG type. So, they can cross the placenta. Okay. So, this is common in RH system. Now, next is erythroblastosis vitalis that uh, we have discussed. Hemolytic disease has one symptom, erythroblastosis vitalis because of RH incompatibility. Here what happens? Hemolysis, RBCs are destroyed. And what happens because of destruction of RBCs? There are large number of production of new RBCs in baby. And this RBCs, new RBCs are immature and therefore they are known as erythroblast. Okay. Why they are immature? Because other extra medullary parts of body also starts RBC production. So RBC production starts not only from bone marrow but from liver, spleen and other places. And this RBCs, they are immature. They are known as erythroblast. Blast. Okay. And the disease is known as erythroblastosis vitalis. Okay. Second symptom is icterus gravis neonatal. Here, what happens because of jaundice, there is yellow discoloration of skin and mucous membrane because of excessive bilirubin production. And there is hepatomegaly and spleen. This is as icterus gravis neonatal. Third, severe form of hemolysis. When large amount of RBCs are destroyed, there are neurological symptoms. Okay. Why? Because large amount of bilirubin is produced. Now, in newborn baby, blood-brain barrier is not developed very well. So, what happens? Now, this bilirubin enters in the brain and mainly it is deposited in the basal ganglia of brain. Basal ganglia. And they produce symptoms. That is chronic. Okay. And this occur when bilirubin level is more than 18 mg per deciliter. Normal is 0.52 normal. 1.5 mg per deciliter. Last one, that is severe form of hemolytic disease, that is hydrops vitalis. Here what happens, there is intrauterine death. Baby dies inside the uterus. There is edema because of anemia and hyperproteinemia, hypoproteinemia, sorry. 
hepatomegaly, liver, spleens are enlarged, and cardiac failure. Okay? Now, how can we prevent it? Because it occurs in second pregnancy. So, what we can do, we can prevent at the time of delivery of first baby. So, what we can do is at 28 to 30 weeks of pregnancy, first pregnancy, of you can write down also first pregnancy or within, suppose if delivery occurs. Suppose patient comes to you at the time of delivery, not at the time of pregnancy. So within 24 to 48 hours after delivery of baby, first baby. If you have checked the blood group, mother's blood group is negative, baby is positive. Then within 24 to 48 hours after delivery, what we can give is we can give NTRH antibodies. And what, what is the role? Suppose in mother circulation, these antigens from baby enters, these antibodies, they cover this antibody. What happens? Mother cannot produce antibody. NTRH antibody cannot be produced in by mother because if they are produced by mother, they are in large amount. Okay? So sensitization can be reduced. Now, suppose if child is born with erythroblastosis, so, what is the treatment given? One, that is intrauterine fetal blood transfusion. If in, inside the uterus the disease is diagnosed, then we can what we can do is we can give blood transfusion. Okay? And that is by intraperitoneal route. Second is after delivery also we can transfuse the blood. And third, that is phototherapy is given to decrease bilirubin level. Other blood group systems are also present, that is Levi's system. Here Levi's was discovered in the female, that is Mrs. Levi's, so the system was given. This is name was given. They are secretory antigens. These antigens for the system, they are present in the saliva and gastric also. And they are related with growth retardation. And they are associated with severe transfusion reaction. Other is MNS system. Here also antigens M, N, S and antibodies NTM, NTN and N are present. Rarely they cause hemolysis and transfusion reaction. Other blood group systems are Duffy, Bombay, Cal, Lutheran, Kid, P, etc. Okay? So this is about blood group system. The Bombay blood group, one important thing is Bombay blood group here antigen is H. So, this is all about all the blood group systems. Now, questions. Uh, you can write down questions, maybe asked long question as well as short one. So, long questions are, you can write down one that is discuss blood groups. Write in brief about RH incompatibility. One of the, this topic is one of the very important topic for practical as well as theory. It is easiest practical, but questions, students may not give answers of all these questions. So please go through it. This is very important. Second question that is enumerate blood group system in human. Discuss RH blood group and mention the hazards of mismatched blood transfusion. Third, mismatched blood transfusion as a long question. Fourth, discuss clinical significance of blood grouping and indication of blood transfusion. Explain the complications of mismatch blood transfusion. Short notes are blood groups, land stainless law, one of the very common question asked in the practical if your practical is blood grouping. Okay. And students, most of the students there cannot answer well. So please go through this land stainless law from the video. Write down whatever I said, please. Discoveries of land stainer, RH factor, RH blood group, RH incompatibility, and erythroblastosis vitalis and hemolytic disease of newborn. If your question is hemolytic disease of newborn, then you have to write down all the types of symptoms. Erythroblastosis vitalis, icterus gravis, neonaterum, hydrops vitalis, and Next one that is 
Icterus gravis neonaterum, hydrops vitalis, and severe form that is carnictrus. So, all you have to write down. Okay? So, this is all about blood grouping. Thank you.